You're live. We're live. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of the Deadpan Diaries. Is it episode 12 or 13, Cobra? Did we change that number? It's 12. It is 12. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, it's me in bronze again. Bronze, how the heck are you? I'm good. I'm doing well. It's been a week since we've talked. You were shopping for some books. Anything else fun that you did? No, mostly just books. Okay. I mean, it's Powell's, right? So it's like a whole, it's a whole day affair. You went to the bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> is that, is it yeah. only in the Northwest? Is Powell's Seattle and Portland? That's it? It's not in Seattle. I went down to Portland. Oh my God. Yeah. I just assumed so, Seattle had it because it's, it's way like better. Truly an all day affair. For those of you who don't know in chat, it's like what the size of a full city block and it's three, four stories. Yeah. And it's everything. It's it's collectors' old school books. It's brand new ones. Obviously, it's just like they pride themselves. There's actually a Powell's in the airport in Portland as well, but that's that's nothing at all the same. But it's a massive bookstore. It's really fun, and it's and it's got everything too. Like literally poetry, prose, mm -hmm. plays. It's almost a little overwhelming if you don't. It is. When people say talk about visiting Powell's, I always tell them don't designate like an hour. Cause it's just too much. Like you really have to like, you take breaks in between. Yeah. There's a pizza place that's right across from it. And like you, you browse for three hours, leave, have a slice of pizza and a beer, come back, yep. browse for a couple hours. Like it's real. Cause there's just so much there that your brain will explode. Like they don't have one aisle of science fiction fantasy. They have four aisles four to six hours of science fiction and then another four to eight of fantasy. Yep. <laughs> so they don't even lump science fiction fantasy together because they have so much there. They have an entire row of, of tabletop RPG and they have about five rows of, of uh, graphic novels and comics. It's insane. It's it is like, insane. Yeah. And it's very Portland too. I, without knowing, I'm assuming Portlandia has done like five episodes on this or skits or whatever, right? It had to. Have. I could believe it. It's, it's so Portland. Yeah. I could believe it. It is weaponized Portland. In general, walking around Portland falls so oh, yeah. in line with that show that it's kind of alarming, you know? It is the, it's have, hipster like, the city. It's just like, yeah. But nice. Every store is like, you know, like made in, like there's a store that's literally called Made in NW or whatever. And it's like everything there is handmade in the Northwest. And it's like, that's the whole theme of your clothing store. Okay. Like, interesting. Like it's just yeah. it's weird. You have weird stuff there. They like it. That's Portland, man. Well, or that's like cool. Screen door, which what? is literally like oh, it's a place screen door screen is door. this re restaurant, and it's <laughs> a bunch of like hipsters from the Northwest. It's their take on like, uh, <laughs> like co Southern comfort food. So instead of, of like somehow. chicken and waffles, they have like chicken and waffles, but the waffles are like lemon flavored and the chicken is seasoned with marionberry sauce fresh from the Tillamook or something <laughs> like everything there's like a really weird twist some of it's not great <laughs> yeah no that's Portland I mean well I knew what I was getting into when I asked you if you went to uh if you went to Powell's uh for me oh my god is that your pizza? It might actually be. And I was before I could even explain it. Let me answer this real quick on air. Mm -hmm. Hello? Okay, I'll be right down. It'll take me a couple minutes. All right, thank you. Bye. <laughs> so. All right, chat. What do you think Jeff gets on his pizza? <laughs> yeah. No, it's someone ordered for me. It's really nice. Every Tuesday, we usually play Warhammer. So somebody, out of the kindness of their heart, ordered pizza through the treat Aww. thing on the stream. But the timing of it, I was like, that's going to be right in the middle of the show. So five minutes of bronze talking to the chat. If that's okay, I'll be right back. And then we'll get into the show. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, be right back. Okay. Well, it looks like this is my show now. So I have to ask chat, what are the pizza toppings that you definitely are not down for? Now, I have a little bit of a controversial opinion because... I personally don't order pineapple on my pizza, but I don't hate it. And I feel like most people fall into one of two camps. Either they absolutely hate pineapple on their pizza or they think it's delicious. And then there's me that's like, 
not a choice that I would make, but if somebody else ordered it, I wouldn't be mad. Like if it was free pizza, I wouldn't be angry if it had pineapple on it. You know, chat, look at bronze. She's the captain now. It's true. I'm the captain now. Anchovies. I can agree with that one. They're too salty and I don't like them. Unfollow on up. See, people get really weird with like their pineapple obsessions. I don't really understand that. Like it's still food. I have no problem with pineapple haters. I'll take all your pineapple on my pizza. I'll be that guy. I like pineapple on my pizza. See, to me, it's weird because I, I just like it. I, it's still edible. Like people act like it's like people are like, oh, that shit tastes like vomit. And I think it's just popular to hate on it. Whereas I'm like, I don't order it, but I could see why somebody would enjoy the combination of, of like salty and savory and sweet. Yeah, I just don't think it's that weird. I feel like people get overly like swept up and stuff like that. You know, I'm in the minority that I don't have a strong opinion either way. I think if you pair it with something spicy like jalapeno, it's good. Yeah, see, I don't really, I don't really have an opinion either way either. Kind of like when like half the internet talks about eating ass and I'm just like 98% of you squares don't do that. You know, it's just popular to do it now. It's popular to talk about it because people are, strange and personally I'm like y'all need to chill <laughs> I should probably tone it down since I'm hosting you know I'm the primary host on Jeff's channel right now to deviate Even away from that uh we had <laughs> last week on the pylon show we had a, somebody who orders pizza sent to him if he wins a Starcraft tournament it's called the pizza pie bi-weekly tournament this individual ordered artichoke on his pizza. And he was asked in the room as one of the hosts, he was like, hey, he's actually in the room. Can you bring him over and put him on camera? So he put the mic on him. And he's like, was it good? Did you like artichoke on pizza? And he's like, yeah. Would you go to it again if I'm paying for it? No. <laughs> yeah. I've never had that on pizza. Yeah. No. I. <laughs> Thank you, Cobra. Um, yeah, no, I, I personally wouldn't put artichoke on pizza because I feel like it would get mushy. Like artichoke hearts? I think they said the leaves or the hearts or something. I, they were very undescript about it. There was a language barrier that we were overcoming, and we weren't quite sure what was going on. I See, I love artichokes. So I'm like kind of thinking about this now because I feel like maybe I would like it, but I think it would come down to texture. Like if it wasn't mushy, I'd probably be down if it didn't get soggy. But if it was like, I've seen people get asparagus on pizza, but that was at like those really bougie pizza places and it was grilled. And I was like, uh, not my choice, but I could maybe see it. The texture would work there with an artichoke. If they're doing it the heart, I don't think they can boil the artichoke like you normally would boil an artichoke. You have to cook the artichoke somehow differently so it doesn't get soggy by the time you put it on. Yeah. He said hearts. Also, he just wanted to try it. Oh, so it was less of like a, I always get artichokes on my pizza and more of like a, I want to try artichokes on my pizza. It was, they're going to give me whatever free pizza I freaking want because I won this tournament. So I'll try out whatever weird toppings I want, yeah, even though they're really it's expensive. Throwaway. Exactly. Ah, oh, now it comes together. I would do that too. Because at the end of the day, it's all food. I feel like people really overreact when they're like, that's fucking disgusting. I'm like, Really, it's food. It's not that disgusting. I mean, unless it's like warm milk and cereal, then it might be a little disgusting because I've seen people do that. But for the, for the most part, it's not. Cereal with water? Mm. No, that's not a thing. I refuse. I think that's an internet meme. That can't be a thing. I refuse to believe that. I knew somebody that did it. I wish it was an internet meme. You knew somebody that did that? Yep. Was Different he? College like, days. It was Did like, he ever go out in the sun or was he a Nosferatu or something? Because that dude wasn't born right. There, you're definitely right. There's something wasn't correct in his head, but <laughs> he didn't really have a refrigerator growing up or something along those lines. So he just put water in cereal. Oh, look, it's liquid now. At that point, why not just eat dry cereal? I don't know. I That's, asked him. He I didn't have so an answer. Questions. I have so many questions. Today I learned Cobra used to know serial killer. Yeah, no, that's somebody that eats people. You know? 
Like that's somebody that you go in their basement. And I was talking about this with miniatures because there's this place in Canada called Miniature World. And they have just like all of like the World's Fair and scenes from like the battles of Gettysburg and like all this stuff. They have it recreated in miniatures. And Mm -hmm. it's like a whole museum devoted to that. And I love it. And I was talking about how I totally always wanted to do one of those. Like I always wanted a house with a basement so I can make a miniature world. And I was talking to my friends and they're like, okay, it was slightly creepy though. I'm like, yeah, no, that's why I never did it. Because if I walked into a house and they had like a, like a miniature like world in their basement with like little people going about their little lives, I would assume there's a sub level of that basement <laughs> where they murder people. Cause you know, like to a certain extent, that's like not normal. That's how I feel about the Sims game. I know that's unpopular, but that's my opinion on the Sims. Yeah, you know what? I've never gotten into the Sims, but I like simulation games. So people expect me to like the Sims because I like things like like Tropico and, you know. Simulating fighting an army or simulating flying a jet is very different than manipulating the lives of fake yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. That I just assume that people that are super obsessed with the Sims are messy bitches who live for the drama. Because like you'd have to be, you have to be like one of those people that watches reality TV. We're probably austernizing, whatever the word is, half of our audience here, some portion of it. Ostracizing? Oh, no. Ostracizing, a little part of it. But yeah, I'm kind of with you. Who here in chat likes Sims? No one's going to raise their hand. Well, especially not after all the stuff we just (laughs) (laughs) said. Too late, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> See, look, that is exactly my old roommate. Reality TV and The Sims was the only game she played. See, I, I, that's one. That's imp- that's like evidence. It's like circumstantial evidence, but it's still evidence. You can yep. just take that and apply it to the whole populace. You know, me, I enjoyed. A playthrough? Well, okay. I, I could say a playthrough would be fine, but eventually you'd get tired of it, right? Like what, how much can you do in that game before it's like, I'm watching these little people live their little lives and I get to control every aspect. It's like that scene from uh, the, the, the Virgin movie where he's like, now your pants are blue. What, what is that? 40 year old version. Vir- oh, virgin. Yeah. Virgin. That movie, it's kind of like that. Where's Jeff? Well, he, we fired him. Me and Cobra did. Um, and so he left. And oh, I think may, he might be back. Just in time to save us. Just, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no, welcome back. How did you enjoy your time while you were laid off? Me? Yeah, because you know me and Cobra laid you off. Oh and wow! Now you're back. Uh, it was funny. I get. I, I was like, you know, you heard me. I was like, yeah, I'll be right down. Mm-hmm. I get to the elevator, which takes probably thirty seconds to a minute. He calls again, says, "Hey, are you coming?" And I had this moment where I was like, "Calm down." He's just a yeah. shitty human being. And I was like, "Hey, man, I just left as fast as I could. I'll be down there as soon as I can." He's like, "All right." And he hangs up on me. I'm like, mm, mm, "All right." It was fine. That's but anyways. Me. Every time someone like fucks with me in my channel, I'm like. Is it though? Do you take that deep breath or do you just kind of lay into them? You think? I do. You do? I really do. You can yeah, lay in harder? Yeah. I don't think I lay into people that often. I usually like I'm sarcastic. So like if I'm playing a game and someone's like, you know, do you like this game? And I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, what do you like about it? And I'm like, and I go back to what I'm doing and they're like, it looks boring. I usually will say a couple of snarky things before I'm like, fam, why are you still here? I don't feel like I lay into people that often, but people will really test your patience over the course of like several hours. They'll just like keep like, they're clearly upset that you, that you're doing what you're doing, but they still stay there to like torture themselves. I guess I have no idea. I don't know why people do that. Yeah, I don't know if you have this experience, but it's one of the things, I know we've talked a little bit about this before, but like I, I try to do a better job too, because sometimes 
you group people together, like it's not the same guy that's uh, asking those questions or being annoyed. It's like someone completely different, but because it's similar enough over the course of a couple hours, you're the singular person, so you're the one getting asked that several times, but they're just, you know, mm -hmm. they're just trying to talk. And also, sometimes, depending on your mood, is how you read things in chat. Not to take away from all your points, because you know I go off on people too, but like, yeah. there's just so many, there's just so often where I'm like, this person's not asking that annoying of a question, but it's the fourth mm -hmm. time today, and now I'm annoyed, so I mm -hmm. try to do a better job of being like, all right, let me address this as a decent human being, not as someone that's like, you know. But I also think it's not us. I think a big part of it is like other broadcasters on Twitch set this precedent of like, oh, yeah. oh this is what a stream is like. Because it's really funny how when people are passive aggressive with you, if you respond in kind, suddenly you're the monster. Oh, or yeah. even like, like, so this person was like backseating today. And I was just like, they were, they were like, oh, like do this or do that. Put them on the high ground. And I'm like, or you could just, you know, let me play the game because I've gotten this far without your help. I don't think that was really rude. And someone immediately was like, wow, this chat's fucking toxic. I've been lurking. And I'm like, that's toxic? Like, y'all y'all are the reason this country is falling apart. Like, holy shit. You guys needed to get bullied in school or something. I know. Like, Because that, like, you know what I mean? Like, to me, That's like, going to be a hashtag. Toxic? Bring back bullying. It's going to come back. That's yeah. toxic. Look, clearly, these kids did not get bullied in school. Because back in my day, that was not toxic. Yeah. Back in my day, we didn't get trophies for participation. And they did the thing where when you when you split the class or anything into two groups, people had picked. And sometimes you were the last one picked. Well, probably not you. You're really athletic. But sometimes you were the last one picked. They did that in my school. I was lucky because I was really tall. So when it came to basketball, I always got picked first. But like, you know, I I'd always see like the bigger girls who were like the last pick. And I'd be like, oh, she's not yeah. going to be bad for her. I think y'all needed to get bullied more because if your idea of, or you could let me play the game because, you know, kind of seems like that's what people are here to watch. Well, it's a funny Toxic. world. Toxic. Really? Yeah. It's a funny world because it's like, it's a bit of both, right? Like they're, a, not that they're, not that we're going to give uh, awards to bullies or something like that, but they are a functional part of learning, right? Like how to stand up to them, what to tolerate, what's not okay, what is okay. Mm -hmm. makes you a little bit tougher that is something that's going to happen as we push forward is there's a whole bunch of like because it's not even like this thing happened to you now how do we learn from this or how do we heal or what do we deal with it it's more of a like let's prevent this thing from ever happening nobody talks that way nobody nobody confronts that you know let's get the parents involved immediately let's get in, in between there's gonna be some kind of interesting developmental stuff growing up because i can see it with uh not to call it my brother as obscure as that is, but just like his generation of parents that are raising kids, there's a whole bunch of different stuff right now. Um, we're, we're way off topic, but this is fun to talk about. But like my parents mm -hmm. spanked me. Um, there was just Thanks. higher standards. There's there's a it just feels like there was things that if you looked at it now, the way it's talked about, it's really frowned upon and bad. Like you don't do that. That's that's terrible. And I've had some family friends, like the way they raise their kids, they never tell them no. They ask them why they feel that way until they kind of get them into a, like, they're like, we're leaving now. Is it, and, and the kid's like, no, I'm not going to leave yet. And they're like, why do you feel that way? It's late at night. Shouldn't we be going home to go to sleep? And they have this discussion. And the rest of us are like, holy fuck. Because the kid, yeah. they know how to game it. It's only like a five-year-old kid, but they already understand their parents never tell them no. So they, just, <laughs> so they were just like, nah, nah I'm going to go do this thing. The parents like fall around like, hey, aren't you tired, buddy? Went on yeah. for an hour. Yeah, I can't handle that stuff, honestly. In general, like I understand that my childhood is slightly warped, so I try not oh, yeah. to like impose that on other people because my parents probably went too far with it. Like my dad was very clear about the fact Like I remember I was like a very talkative kid. And, you know, I remember my dad was getting frustrated because it is frustrating, like when oh, yeah. when there's the kids playing and then there's one kid that's like, I'm going to hang out with the adults where it's like, you really probably shouldn't, you know. And I remember like I was standing there and standing there. And my dad's like, God, you're being such a downer. You know, like we're just trying to sit here and have beers. Why can't you go play with the other kids? And I remember I hit a point where I was like, you know what I think? And my dad literally cut me off and he was like, you're seven. No one cares what you think. Got him. And, and here you are like, 30 and remembering that. And I was like, uh, I was like a humbling moment where I was like, yeah. damn, he's probably. So now when there's like 
you know, me and my friends are talking and they, one of them has a kid and there's like a five-year-old that's like, I think that I'm like, damn, you need to get told that at some point. And some people are like, that's harsh. And I'm like, no, like the fact that everybody on the internet thinks that not only that they're entitled to opinion, which they are, but that you're entitled to listen to it. Yeah. Those kids never got told that no one gives a shit about their opinion and it should probably happen. It's like horrifying. people come in and be like, I liked you more with long hair. And I'm like, no one gives a shit about your opinion. Wow. Is this because I'm not a sub? No, it's because your parents never told you that no one wants to hear you talk. And now you just think that you get to talk and you don't like, well, you can, but no one's obligated to listen to your dumb yeah. ass. Yep. No, it's to your point though. It's so weird. Like, like, you know, you're 30 something now, right? So mm -hmm. that's how long that stayed with you. That's the part that freaks me out too. Cause I, I had a, I had an otherwise well-intentioned coach one time like yell at me about something when I was 10 in baseball or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And for the rest of my life, I couldn't really catch baseballs very well because I was afraid. And even now, like that element of that level of confrontation stays with me. I'm like, Jesus, I don't know if I ever yeah. want to have kids because it's like one time, one time I could be like, right. your hands are fat. And they're like, oh, my God, and it just ruins them forever. <laughs> and I'm like, you know. Too there much has power. to be a middle ground, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I don't say, I don't think we should like, we should scar children for life. I agree. I, cause you know, obviously there could have been a better way to have that conversation. It's also than... inevitable though. It's just going to happen. Like, yeah. And I, I do like, I don't know, we're all over the place, but I, I just saw a, a article that was talking about if you were born between 1985 and 1995, it's one of the most unique generations that you can think about because... Mm -hmm. Our parents came from graduate college in four years, nuclear family, like like tradition, really weird stuff. It was pre-internet for the most part, pre-smartphones. But then in our generation, we saw the introduction of that into the internet. And then we've seen the newer generation of people now that communicate hyper-efficiently. You know, it used to be the average person could be reached in nine minutes. This is before internet and smartphones. Now it's mm -hmm. six seconds, I think it is, is the average for everybody the difference That's there insane. is in it's yeah it's different it's a different universe my point is you and i grew up in a generation where parents still did yeah they'd swat you they'd talk about it they'd, they'd be like hey you know like you're like your dad it's like you're seven shut up <laughs> and then, yeah, you know yeah. that's really really harsh but at the same time it allowed you to confront that moment and you as a human grew to kind of on some level respect that yeah your opinion sometimes doesn't matter it's and that's not okay place. It's not show and tell yeah. adults are speaking here and they want to talk about adult things. And it's not my place. Like to me, when I see that happen now where kids like don't really know, like you should go and play and do kid things. And they're like inserting themselves in your conversation or being obnoxious in my head. I'm like, I would have gotten, when we got home, I would have gotten spanked for that, for interrupting adults and for being loud and for being like, you know, mm. I, and so I have a very warped view of how children should behave. I'm not saying all children should be like that. I'm just saying like, that's that's how I view it. Like yeah. when there's kids that talk a lot, they're like, "Oh, it's a good kid. He just talks a lot." I'm like, "That's not a good kid. Good kids don't talk a lot." <laughs> like that's literally right. how where my brain goes. Where I'm like, you know, what is what constitutes a good kid if you're not quiet? Like, <laughs> yeah. And what's funny is they touch on that in Arrested Development too, like the, <laughs> the school where <laughs> I care what it's called. Yeah, they just never talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Obviously, just, that's an extreme. You know what, though, Jeff? He's really well behaved. He's just very loud and very obnoxious, and he won't be quiet when you tell him to. But he's really well behaved. So, I, really I was I I can't remember where I heard it, but it's just improve on your parents, right? So, like what your parents did, there's probably a certain degree of, of truth to that, and that's a good. And then you improve on that. So it sounds mm -hmm. like your parents are a little bit extreme and spanking you for just talking too much. But at the same time, I don't disagree with you that a well behaved kid knows that like if they're talking too much and someone's like hey do you mind letting us get some words in here as well and then they're like oh okay that's fine or something mm -hmm. along those lines that's a really that's a well-behaved awesome kid but then kids will be kids too there's that time where they just don't understand or they think it's goofing around or whatever but yeah this kind of also like ties into our main topic of code switching because mm -hmm. i learned how to code switch very quickly as a child in the sense that so what is code switching it's when you change up your vernacular and your demeanor in order to fit in with a group around you. When I was a kid, I acted differently around other kids than I did around adults. That's code switching. I learned from a very young age that 
while other kids might want to hear about my story on this field trip I went to on to the Jelly Belly factory, adults did not want to hear that story. So let the, you know, like I would code switch and I'd be very quiet and occasionally an uncle would poke me and be like, how's school going? And then maybe I might tell him that story, but there was like definitely a switch being flipped. Um, and sometimes like I, this like lesson always stuck with me. Um, I met this very successful ex cricket player who was a neighbor of mine when I moved to India. It's an ex professional cricket player. And now he does like commentary and stuff because cricket's huge in India. Yeah. And he told me that the reason because I told him that like you know my dad he's like you're really quiet and I was like I told him kind of like how my dad raised me and he was like honestly that's not bad because a lot of times when you are around elders they have a lot of wisdom to impart and you should listen to their stories instead of trying to tell your own Mm. and I really I was like wow that is true you know And I realized like over, because this is when I was much older, I was like, you know what? I did learn a lot because I was one of those kids that when I talked to my grandpa, instead of sitting there and being like, I did this and I did that and we went on a boat, I was quiet. And so he would tell me things and impart wisdom and tell me stories of when he was a kid. And I learned more because I was, it taught me to be a good listener. And that's not necessarily a terrible thing. Yeah. As long as you're able to, I guess, switch between the two. Yep. Okay. Let's uh, switch gears and, and follow the segue you just did into the topic at hand too, for the most part. And you know, mm-hmm. the parenting thing that we should do do a whole other topic as two people that don't have kids. That'd be great. Let's tell parents how to parent. I want to do that. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. Um, but code switching. This is another one of those topics that's like gigantic, right? And, and you touched on this, and that it can be so many different things. Uh, a little bit of background on behalf of Bronze. You can correct me where I'm wrong, but you grew up partially in America and partially in India. Mm-hmm. In an Indian family, so like code switching is, it was just always going to happen for you no matter what. Mm-hmm. So uh, two very different cultures that you had a significant part of your life in. But I think, and I like this, this is a comment from Wabi Sabi in the chat as well, but like this is something that comes up for a lot of people. And I think it's a tough one in that you're going to do code switching on some level. Code switching, again, has that, in my opinion negative connotation to it that doesn't necessarily need to be a negative connotation obviously you can right. take it to the extreme and if you're like what's up my players and, and like making people uncomfortable and, and doing something mm-hmm. de- uh, demeaning that way then yeah that's that's bad but there is also just different ways that we talk to different people you know that their experience you know about their culture well you're gonna mm-hmm. avoid saying certain things you're gonna talk a different way you're gonna be you're gonna speak more anyways the the examples are limitless but the point is I kind of want to unpack this and unravel it and then talk about the different, I think the, the meat of this topic would be where is it appropriate, how to think about it, and how to how it is used, I guess, right? So if people can come away from this with a better understanding of, of how that goes down, that would be good, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to kick it off or should I? No, I think you're the expert, yeah. Um. So let's actually get, let's let's address that first. I think with the current conversation being the way it is, the reason people have negative connotations with code switching is they typically only apply it to minorities, which is completely inaccurate. Everyone code switches. Everyone. That's, that's something that you like, if you are like, let's take me on my broadcast, you know, I might use more cuss words, use more swear words, you know, all of that. Like I, I remember I would stream and say the most profane things, you know, just cause that's my, I swear like a sailor. And then afterwards I would go work at like a facility that was like that dealt in elderly care. Yep. Do you think that I spoke to my 80 to 90 year old residents the same way I speak to my audience? Heck no, no. Yeah. I don't not at all. It's not even close because the way I speak to them would be probably appalling and horrifying. Um, because they grew up in an era where you don't say words like that. They right. probably would get, would gasp if you said fuck, you know, <laughs> and we say, we see words like that on, on the radio, on TV. Like some of the times it gets bleeped out, but you know what it is, right? So when you, that's code switching and it has nothing to do with race. Sometimes you code switch when you're around people that know what you're talking about versus when you're around people that don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes you'll code switch depending on your profession or the setting you're in. Um, let's say I'm in a debate club or model United Nations. I yeah. would naturally take on more of a 
leadership sort of stance or I would be a little bit more, um, I don't know how to describe it, like a little bit more outspoken, a little bit more forceful with my delivery, like right. because I wanted to be taken seriously within that group and I did not want to take a back seat. I might not be that way in a conversation normally. If right. I'm sitting at a table with friends, I might let a lot of things slide. If, even if I don't agree with something somebody said, I might not say anything and just sit there and eat my food um, and contribute to the conversation in my own way. But if I'm in a debate club meeting and someone said something, I might very quickly be like, actually, I think that's a really bad idea. And here's why. Because there's the difference between being an active participant and just socializing. So we code switch all of the time. It's not just a racial thing. It's not just a, a economic thing. Like yeah. where if you grew up in a poor neighborhood versus a rich one, it really comes down to uh, a tool that human beings use in order to relate to other people around them better. Yep. And I think that's a really good introduction into just the ge ge generics of code switching, I suppose. Um, did you want to go into, like, do you want to talk about the the complicated and perhaps poor uses of it and where it's inappropriate or where do you want to go from there? Um, I don't know. I guess like I wanted to talk about it because like you said, it has a lot of negative connotations and yeah. I guess I kind of wanted to start to unpack like, why is that? Or why yeah. do people think we can it's go there. bad? Cause there's a lot of people that as soon as you say that word, they're just like, well, we shouldn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be weird or strange. Agreed. Um, Ignorant even, I would say. Yeah. Because you just do I, do it, no matter what. Like a good example someone just brought up is how you talk to your grandma and how you talk to your significant other. God, I hope that's different. And that is code switching. <laughs> like, uh, and everyone does that, right? So that's why it's so important that you unpack this because I think the term is bigger than the way people use it. When people say code switching to me, 99% of the time they're talking about probably a white person, probably race, and they're probably talking about how the white person is trying to, uh, they're like thinking they're doing the right thing by communicating in a way that says they're familiar with the culture or, you know, whatever the, the communication style of that other person. But in doing so, they're actually making them uncomfortable. Um, and if not race, then like male to female, all that stuff where it's, it's usually someone from the majority trying to identify with someone from a minority of some level or whatever and in doing so they're making them uncomfortable does that sound is mm -hmm. that fair because I, I feel like that's yeah. what that's how it's used for sure um i i've seen probably i'll give you an example of like the worst thing like thing i ever witnessed and this was the only time i ever saw like this happen um i back when i worked retail we had a gentleman come in who was a very fresh immigrant from mexico yep. he did not speak a lot of english and the way that the sales clerk talked to him was the most insulting thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Would you like me to do it? <laughs> Every white guy ever? It's just to speak English more deliberately and loud and maybe mix in some Spanish, right? Loud. Yeah, like really loud. And do like, you understand? Do and they're like, yeah. Yeah, I used to do that when I worked with the elderly because they yeah, well, they're hard of legitimately hearing. can't hear. So I'd be like, you have to go outside and then to the right. And it's right there. But people talk that way to people who can't speak English and or people who don't speak English. I should say that. And it's incredibly yeah. insulting. <laughs> it's rough. And it's I'll say this. This is not an excuse. Um, and that's why I like a lot of these topics, because I think unpacking and just thinking about it is the most healthy and first step. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a very open and not racist culture and family. We, you know, we have friends of all different shapes and sizes. But at the same time, as just a white person in a predominantly white person place, there are things that happen that you just kind of follow suit with. And only later in life kind of go like, wait a second, that's kind of let me think about that. One example, this is way off topic. We used to play a, mm -hmm. a touch football game. Not even touch, it was like tackle, but it was called Smear the Queer. That was the name of the game. <laughs> what does that have to do with football? Well, it was one person running the ball. Everybody else is tackling that person. But the game was called Smear <laughs> the Queer. And oh, the literally, it, it was not until like high school that I was like, oh my God, that is so Pretty horrible dark. and it's like so bad but there's other things like that too the reason i'm talking about now 
is because I've been that guy in the past when I was younger, where if I encounter someone that speaks a different language and it seems like they're struggling to understand me, instead of like trying to find a way to communicate with them, I'll just say what I said louder as if that's going to fuck, you know, like that's as if yeah. that's going to help at all. But yeah. that's what I've seen other people do. So it's kind of a learned thing for me. And again, only later when I kind of unpack where I, I see other people do it, I'm like, that looks bad. That looks uncomfortable. I, yeah. And for me, it was definitely traveling abroad that made me realize that that's not normal. Because growing up in California or being born in California, I should say, um, I used to see those interactions all the time, all the time. And then I remember visiting Japan and I would ask for directions or ask people things and they didn't scream in my face, yeah. you know, <laughs> that never, that never happened. They would normally like either point or like try to use hand gestures to describe it. And they, yeah. and I, you know, like, and we would sit there, but they definitely didn't yell in my face in Japanese slowly to try to get me to understand where the train, right. what the train station was. Right. Cause that's ridiculous. They would, Cause that's, that's stupid they would either like through, like I said, through cognates, like using certain words and me being like, oh, right, L that way, like figuring it out from there. And so that's when I was like, being the obnoxious tourist, I guess, being put in yeah. those shoes. I was just like, it's really seeing, witnessing it again when I came here was when I was like, that's not normal. But I don't know where we as a culture picked that up, but it's not great. And right. I don't know why we do it because it doesn't help the situation. You're just yelling at someone. <laughs> yeah i can understand saying things slowly but the increased volume makes almost no sense so yeah, and i think it's a good starting point because i think this is the perhaps one of the more innocuous uses of of the negative side of code switching because it is generally it's not like the person in their head is saying like stupid non-white i hate you and i'm gonna yell you know it's more of them just being like i've seen other people do this i'm not thinking mm. this is how i'm gonna do it um but it's but j just starting there as a, as a launch pad is like unpack that you're 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 making the person it, it becomes more aggressive it becomes more angsty you're frustrated probably on some level uh, if you're not then this is a weird way to raising your voice and repeating yourself is kind of a weird way to not be frustrated I guess and mm -hmm. it's kind of not good but it go it gets worse from there too for me where there's like a lot of examples of and I'm particularly sensitive to this because I think this is. Uh, I was raised to really care what people think and how they feel, uh, and, and I consider myself an empathic and, and compassionate person, so I try to be... Barrison's call me out, I guess. Um, I try... Hey! Yeah, he lives here. Anyways. He lives here. He does. It's like, literally, it's the only other guy that walks into this place. He's barking at him. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is... The other use of code switching that really makes me uncomfortable is when someone is well-intentioned, and this is something that I've gotten caught up in. I'm not going to use names, but I'll tell the story in a second. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to communicate about something and identify with it in an overly familiar way. And again, their intentions are pure. And I think this is where we're going to have a lot of controversy on this subject, but it comes off wrong. So an example would be... Uh, my friend, who is also a white male, and, and this is inescapable, by the way. There's gonna, that's going to rub some people the wrong way. We've already had that come up a couple times, too. But, like, you just have to understand, at least for us as a mostly American, my perspective as an American, I come from a majority white male place. That gaming, America, there's just a lot of white dudes, okay? So when I talk about this perspective, I'm not saying all white people are evil or whatever, obviously. But I do see them run into these issues a lot as a white male. Um, he was talking about Asian culture in particular, like he was trying, and we had a driver or a guy that was like kind of handling us on this gig and he wanted to be familiar and friendly with him. And he kind of referred to him as like, for you, as like a Chinese individual. And the guy was like, no, man, I'm, I'm, I'm Korean. But he was talking about like a subject and he kind of just inferred that, um, as if they were better friends than they were. But also he was just kind of assuming he knew what his race was and then, and then talking about it. It was tough. And, and the talk from there privately went like he was just trying to be friendly and familiar, but he offended that guy. And he was upset that he offended that guy because he thought it was only because he's a white dude trying to do that, that mm -hmm. he that the offense even existed. And that really bothered him. That's something that comes up a lot. Right. The end. I, 
I don't know. This is so weird because I was just talking about this today. And I was talking about, or yesterday, I was talking about how I'm so, I'm like so burnt out on the word offended because yeah. it's not, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's not always the right word. And I was talking about how there's like, there seems to be these two diametrically opposed sides where like, let's say this is an example that spawned all of it for me. Cause usually like I'll see something occur and then my brain unpack, unpacks it over the course of six days. Someone will post on the internet, like, you know, went to a comic book shop. They asked me like, you know, if I read comics or whatever there, you know, like I walked into a D and D store. They asked me if I've ever played D and D yeah. and you know, like, the, the female's immediate reaction is to be upset or angry and defensive. And the male's immediate reaction is to be like, well, they were just being friendly. Go fuck yourself. Right. And I was like, part of it is like your reaction. You have to think about context. And I know that I have like the foresight or I guess, I don't know how to describe it. The awareness mm -hmm. or empathy that when someone asks me, quite frankly, a stupid question like that, I understand that they're just trying to relate. They want to strike up a conversation about a topic they think you might be interested in. And I was on a plane working on leveling up my character sheet for D&D &D Live because I we leveled up and I didn't have a chance to do it before. A person next to me, while I have my player handbook out, leveling up to level six, says, do you play D&D? &D? And my brain was just like, well, no fucking shit, Sherlock. Are you fucking yeah. <laughs> like, you know? And I was like, ah, I immediately had this thought of like, I think that's what annoys me about it. It's just like, look at the context clues. It's such a fucking stupid question. And I was like, no, put that down, put that aside. He just wants to start a conversation. Yes. So I was giving that advice to people in my chat. I was like, dudes, when you approach women, you have to understand context that they've probably been checked. You know, like if some if they say they like World of Warcraft, the amount of times like oh my while God. wearing my World yeah. of Warcraft merch when someone's like, oh, really? What class do you play? Like we've all been checked. I remember wearing a Knuckles hoodie, like this was like 12 years ago, into a game store and someone asked me, do you even know what kind of animal Knuckles is? You know, like things like that. Like y y we've been checked and n and I understand that's not the majority before anybody's like, majority guys like, I understand that. Majority of the time when dudes find out that you play games, they treat you like a fucking princess. They treat you like a goddamn fucking unicorn. But there is a small subset that has never had sex that goes to Friday Night Magic and they hate you just by virtue of having a pulse and being there. And before you say, oh, I don't know about that. I'm uh, My daughter goes to Friday Night Magic. She's never had a bad experience. Her experience doesn't negate mine. I worked in a magic store for six years and I've, I, cannot, I cannot count how many awful interactions mm -hmm. I had. Things from like, oh, you're playing Selesnia? Yeah, chicks usually play Selesnia. Like people that go out of their way to insult the things you like or insinuate that, oh, you like Okami? Most women like Okami. No, bitch, Okami's just a good game. Most people like Okami. So you get, when you, uh, when you compound all of those, it comes to this point where I can understand both sides. And I feel so, I feel like I'm in the no man's land. Because I can understand dudes that are like, I just want to strike up a conversation with yep. this person that has a similar interest to me. And I can understand women that are like, really? Another one of these bitches? Yep. So I was giving blanket advice of like, if you're a dude and you see a chick and you like her or you want to just maybe you just want to be friendly and she has a Borderlands backpack, instead of saying, hey, you like Borderlands? Why not be like, oh, hey, so you have a Borderlands backpack. You, did you see the trailer for the third one yet? That's like mm. way just like it it circumvents the whole like, do we even play that game or did you get it free at a convention? You know, like and maybe she did get it free at a convention. She might respond with, oh, no, this is my boyfriend's backpack. But there's like no skin off her back, you know, so I, it's so weird to be in that middle ground. But I think it's because I know how to code switch mm -hmm. quite a bit. So like for me, I can adjust to both of those. Yep. Like I, if I'm with a group of men and they're talking about women who have been irrationally angry at them for being nice, I can code switch to empathize. Yep. Maybe that sounds manipulative, but I can. And if I'm around women who are complaining about their negative experiences they've had, I can code switch because I've had those too. It's really weird to be in that middle ground, but I think the middle ground is more of what we need in this world. Because if you immediately assume that everybody that asks you a stupid, annoying question like that is coming from a bad place, the world's going to be very dark. Yes. That being said, no one is entitled to be nice to you just because your intentions were good. 
And that's the part that also confuses me. Dude. Where people feel like apparently because your intentions were good, I'm supposed to be entitled to be a pre or you're entitled to my appreciation, yep. which isn't really the case. God, you hit the nail on the head like 17 times in a row and I'm, <laughs> I'm thought orgasming right now. I love it. It's some of the, one of the, my favorite words that you unpacked and I just want to, I'm basically reiterating, but just to drive it home for me, cause this is so good was the word context. And I think when you expand on that, the way you did where it's like, you don't, cause, cause there's, most of the people we're going to be talking to with this topic that are going to hear this, I hope to God and I believe they're not the kind of people that is at that magic store that's like, you play magic, which one of your boyfriends bought you your first deck. Like, they're, I hope they're not that person. They are instead the person who wants to engage in conversation, wants to talk to them. But unfortunately, either that the person they're talking to is sensitive to this or the way they go about it is uh, inappropriate. Kind of like for me, where I had that story of like, that's just, I, I would talk louder because that's what I saw other people do. Where with a girl, they're like, hey, cool, Mario's on your shirt. Did you really, did you beat the first three? And that question doesn't necessarily in their head come off as like the most, I'm checking them, I don't believe them. But it's like socially so acceptable to talk that way to girls in gaming in particular. And the girl has probably experienced that check a thousand times that it's a bad topic for them and the guy's falling into a trap of like, they've just seen other people do this or they're doing it. But when you put the context of this and you unpack it and be, and be more thoughtful, and you ended with this, this is great. Instead of saying a question that's predatory in some way or like challenging, just be like, I love that game too. Like, what was your favorite part of it? You know, like not a, not a check perhaps, but more of a like bonding or like my favorite thing was this. I had the hardest time beating it. Like, how did you find that game? And, and when did you first start playing? Like that kind of stuff. It's a terrible example. I don't think people talk that way, but the point is. <laughs> Some people do. Yeah. Some people really do. Like I, it's, it's so quick. Like there's like this very weird subset of people that were taught that the best way to maybe obtain a female's approval is to insult her. Yeah. It's immaturity. And it's like, immaturity. I used to do that. That happened to me a lot. Like, yeah, yeah. like a lot in my life. Like you'd be shocked. And then they go on to ask me for my number after saying things like, like I was wearing a Bioshock Infinite shirt. I think it's a good game. And someone's like, oh, Infinite, huh? Too bad they all went downhill after the first one, but you do you, I guess. Anyways, uh, do you like what time do you get off? And I'm like, with you're a you? stupid cunt. Never. You're gonna die alone. Like that's like that was literally what came out of my mouth. Is you're a stupid cunt and you're gonna die alone. Cause I was just like, that's so fucking rude. Like you legit opened with that, telling me that a game I like is garbage. And some people are gonna be like, oh well, you shouldn't have flown off the handlebars at him. You work an eight-hour shift in retail and deal with that bitch at the end of it and tell me how you respond. Clearly, you've never worked retail or a wait, waiting job in your life because it's already hell. Yeah. And you deal with that and your hell is compounded by 10, you know? Um, it's so, like, th that does exist. It, it, there's a lot of, I still get it. I still get it. There's people that yeah. feel like the best way. And I'm sure there's somebody in chat that will probably say that, they used to do that or they've seen their friends do it that feel like the best thing to do is insult you. Mm. I had a bartender just this past weekend in Portland make little remarks like that. Or like, like what? do just like, like I played a song on the jukebox and he skipped it. But like, he was like doing little ribbing things, like just like little in a flirty like, way. Um, Okay, here's a here's a better example because that was maybe like maybe he just didn't like the song, but I was there with a friend who was Australian, and he went out of his way to say that Australians were slutty. Hmm. Not joking. Hmm. And I was like, ah, uh, you know, I don't really like. I have, and I tried to lighten the mood. I was like, oh, I have I have a really good friend who's you know. Australian, she, I, I, her and I were joking about it and she's like, oh yeah, in Australia, we don't have sluts. We have shazzes and a shaz is just a girl who likes to have fun. And that's how, and I thought that was the cutest shit ever. I was like, oh my God, that's such a better way to like, <laughs> but that, so I used to call people shazzes in my chat all the time because she's not a slut. She's just a girl who likes to have fun. But I, I said that just to like, you know, yeah. 
lighten the mood. And he's like, I think I would know. I've like, I've, I've like dated six Australians. Mm. So he was so clearly like making little digs at her and like him going out of his way to state that he had had sex with six Australians. So clearly he's an expert and they're all whores. Like it was, when I tell this story, you might be like, what the fuck that really happened? It did. Yeah. Because he thought he was being cool bartender. That's the other part, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I'm just like, if you're trying to bang her, that was like, you've, you've struck out on everything right here. Because the three of us, as soon as you walked, we were like, God, what a cunt. We probably shouldn't tip him. That was our reaction to that. Not like, oh, yeah, he, he said Australians are sluts. I'm going to prove him right. Like, you know? <laughs> That that yeah. whole like somebody that somebody called him that's what it is negging, um, it's real, it's a real thing it that is. people do. I don't know why they do it, but they do, and they I guess they think it's maybe a way to get your self approval or something. Or you're no, I I've thought a lot about this one too. This um that style of flirting is just immaturity as far as I'm concerned. I, that's like the simplest term I can put over it because I'm not going to speak on behalf of every guy, but again from the culture I was raised up in or whatever, that was kind of part of it was in it, but you grow out of it is the hope. Like you eventually learn, this is a bad strategy for the most part. <laughs> like it's, it's not even if, if we're being very honest, it's not even that you think I'm not, I don't like myself this way. You're just like, I'm not getting results. This is not, it's not productive. Like girls, when you're younger and weird, like on the play set kind of way, uh, you know, you do the tease, like, I don't like to be tickled, then you tickle them, all, all that weird shit that kids do, it's like, that kind of makes sense, but when you get to, like, 17, 18, 19, 20, no, nah, I, I, especially, it just doesn't, and not in the way you'd ever want it to anyways, like, let's put it this way, if it did work, if you did chastise and make someone feel kind of bad or say weird things like that to them, and then they were into you, there's other things, <laughs> there's other issues probably boiling there, but, um, the type of person that goes for that chat is not the type of person no. that you want, male or female. Because I've seen it work both ways. I've seen oh, yeah. women that love to put men down because it keeps them. That's usually like, I feel like women do it after the relationship begins, whereas men do it as a way to like get the girl. That's just my boy, general yeah. observation. I might be totally wrong. We're generalizing big time. Like, yeah. I just, I just feel like women tend to do that shit after the converse, like after you're together, or after you're dating, like make little remarks or tease you. And I think part of it is like, I've seen my friends do it to their yeah. boyfriends where, you know, we were talking about going hiking and this girl was talking about her husband and she was like, yeah, he's not going to go. God knows he could use some hiking though. And I was like, whoa. And she's like, what? He's gained weight. And I'm like, it's like, come on. There's like a barbecue. There's like 12 of us here. Oh, you shit. know what I mean? Like, like she said super publicly. Yeah, I was yeah. just like, man, like, uh, it's one thing to like poke fun, but like the way she said it and stuff, I was like, ah, that I felt so bad for him. And he laughed it off. But I was like, you probably shouldn't call your spouse fat in front of like, all of his friends like that's and you actually said that too, didn't you, Bronze? I did. I love your walk of life, dude. There's like, for some reason, you're you're like a weird, <laughs> awkward blank because people still say weird shit to you. And you're like, you're the one person out of 25 that'll call them out for it. But it keeps happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I was just like, that's mean, yeah. you know? Yeah, and like, it, yeah. Like, and then like I was at a wedding and another bridesmaid was there and we we're all sitting because, you know, you have a signed seating and she says about her date, she's like, um, the person I was with co complimented their suit and she's like, yeah, I have to dress him. God knows he's like a big eight year old. And I was like, he got a compliment. You couldn't let him have a compliment. Like it was a dude complimenting him on a suit. It's one thing to be like, oh, I helped him pick it out or let him do yeah. that. I'd be like, thanks. She helped me get it. But like, you just couldn't let him have that. Like for two seconds, that just, what did it just fucking take the wind out of your sails that somebody said something nice yeah, about it's him? Weird, man. I, we all know people like that, or, or there's people <laughs> in relationships like that. like that. I, uh, yeah, I've, I've fortunately always been in relationships where that's never been the dynamic and I would never, I don't know. I'm not attracted to that at all. Like I, your partner or whoever you're with spending that much time with should be like your number one fan and your biggest supporter. It's always weird to me when I see that dynamic and it's usually, by the way, in private, they're like super loving and nice, but it's like a weird thing that they do to try to be endearing in public. They're like, ah, yeah, mm -hmm. her head would fall off if I didn't keep it on her shoulders for her. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fucked up. Because it's dude. like a bit of like social approval. Like it's 
trying to look like you're cool or funny at the expense of your partner. Yeah. If I think you did it to a stranger, I, they would probably slap back, right? Like I would say it's dated that. too. Like that was the kind of jokey way that like family sitcoms talked back in the day. And a lot of us grew up watching that. So I think that's kind of where it comes from. Mm -hmm. And it was more accepted, accepted socially then. But now it stands out more. So it's, it's again, kind of that word context you used earlier, which I really like. Like maybe that communicated something differently 20 to 15 or more years ago. Now, 2019, we were in the middle of a wedding and you say, my, my date's fat. Everyone looks at you like, you're a dick. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't like identify and chuckle. Or maybe they do. Maybe you got that kind of group of friends. But for the most part, there's a good chance that the people you're talking to, a lot of them hear that and they're like, oh. And they laugh because they're uncomfortable. But they're, they're going to be like, wow, that's fucked up. That's not a and nice it's thing another say. it's like this is all related because it's all code switching. Like, right. you know, in private, you might never say like, God, you're like an eight year old. I have to fucking dress you. Maybe you would. But you but probably not. When you say that in front of other people, it's you're trying to once again code switch to get their thumbs up or ha, she's funny or yeah. ha, I like her. She's sassy. And the same thing happens like I'll, you'll understand very soon why this person's an ex. Um, I went to a party uh, or it was like a little Christmas get together. We were late and we come in they're like, Oh, I made it. And the first thing he says is like, well, yeah, Jasmine took like 45 minutes to get ready. And I was just like, you call me out like that. Are you? It was rude as shit. And I was only like 19 and I still knew like, you don't do that. You don't throw your, Cause I was used to seeing my parents. My, I don't care if my mom made my dad late. My dad would never say it, but for him, it was about, like getting the approval from everybody else of like, I wasn't late. She was, I'm still cool. I'm going to go ahead. And the thing is he didn't say anything while I was getting ready of like, Hey, can you hurry it up? Or Hey, cause I'm Indian. We show up an hour to two hours after the party has started. <laughs> like that is us. I don't know. Like if, let me give you an example. We did a barbecue on 4th of July. We put the date on the invitation as seven o'clock. But we really anticipated that people would be there around eight. Our white neighbors, Sarah and Paul, God seven. bless them, showed up right at seven. And 658. We're like, yeah. Yeah. And we're like, I opened the door and my mom is like, <laughs> like all of us are just like, what are you doing here? And they're like, you um, said seven. Yeah. And they were really cool because they were our neighbors. They're like, oh, we'll help you set up. So they just were like getting the grill ready. <laughs> God, I love they them. did help you them. set up but I'll tell you what their conversation yeah. was that night they're like <laughs> yeah basically they weren't ready Paul at was seven. like oh I'll get the grill started people are gonna be here any minute and my dad's like we've got a good hour don't worry about it <laughs> it was so cute um so they basically became hosts and helped us set up oh, so but that funny. was like it's a thing like if, if you want people to show up at six you put like four or five on the invitation because that's just how we are culturally so to me it wasn't a big deal i was like it's a party there's like 20 people there us being 40 minutes late means nothing they're not waiting for us clearly to him it mattered and he didn't convey that to me so first thing he did is code switch and instead of being passive aggressive to me he did it in front of everybody so that they would be like haha oh yeah i know how that is this one takes 45 minutes to get ready or this one takes an hour and i'm just like you have hot girlfriends. This is your problem. This is your thing you want to complain. This is a hill you want to die on. Mm. <laughs> it's such a well, weird it's, thing. But it's what we're talking about. He wasn't, he was doing a learned behavior. He wasn't thinking it through. He's not thinking, he's not like literally going from A to B with that and saying, Jasmine will take this lightly and be totally fine with it and not be offended. And this will boil right over. He was thinking, whatever, it's, it's done. It's a simple, silly comment. But it is fulfilling mm -hmm. all the things you just said, right? It is identifying everyone like, hey, 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 this girl over here, right? And everyone's supposed to be like, right. hey, girls, am I right? They're stupid bitches. And everyone's like, yeah. And then, you know, you move on but with your day. But there's a time. I feel like that is a, an example of code switching. Like it's shifting into the wrong gear. Because I think if he had waited to separate off with a couple of his dudes and get some beers, I wouldn't have cared if he said that about me. And but he wouldn't have heard he it. it to like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like. But it's it's about who you're saying it to. It's about the context of of everything. Like every like if it's a bunch of dudes at a bar and they want to complain, like, oh my god, Jasmine always takes forty two minutes to get ready. To a certain extent, I don't really care about what you bitch to your friends about. And if you want to play up things that you normally don't care about to code switch, that's fine. To relate to everyone else there, that's cool. People do that all the time. Yeah. But when there's ways to do it well and there's ways to do it poorly.
And that's what we're talking about, chat. So I'm seeing there's been a great discussion in the chat, by the way. Kudos to all you guys. I appreciate you guys following along with this. But um, what I like about this talk in particular, and we started off this way, but it's kind of convoluted, but everything we say is not necessarily outwardly wrong, except for the obvious examples. What this guy did is something that is socially done. It probably is wrong, but like uh, Jasmine just correct, not even corrected, but kind of went on to explain. If he pulls his buds aside and quietly makes that joke, and it's a bonding... Again, it's weird to look at it from the macro perspective, because out here it's like, guys should never talk that way. But guy, you know, guys, girls, whatever, they fucking sometimes make inappropriate jokes. But if it's not in the presence of that person, it's more okay-ish, I guess, context-wise. And, and that would be where they're code switching in private and they're kind of identifying that maybe to the whole room with Jasmine, Jasmine right by me, that's not the right time to make that joke, if I must make that joke, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but that... Getting away from the example, that specific analysis is what's so important for code switching, in my opinion. Again, um, is the context, reading the situation. Because sometimes you can be less mature or silly, but if you're try if you're at least conscientious of the scope of it and that it could be misconstrued or done, you know, could cause people harm. If you at least think that through, then you're a more active and better person than a lot of people. Which, again, under the topic of code switching, I think a lot of it's just learned behavior. It's just people doing things. And then later finding out that thing they did. Because here's the inexcusable part. If you're dating, and we're just we're going to use the bronze girl example. Mm -hmm. This is why this is really silly to me. And these stories that keep coming up. If you're dating bronze girl, you probably know that will piss her off. I can't imagine mm -hmm. you spend significant time with you and be like, ah, she'll probably take that lightly. No. I think of you as the kind of person where if I call you out in the middle of a room full of our friends, you'd probably be pretty pissed, actually, as it turns out. Whereas there are mm -hmm. other people that, that you do know who, like, are unfathomable. I could be like, walk in and be like, couldn't believe they fit in through the door, the fat ass. And they'd be like, oh, I don't care about anything. You'd be like, well, okay. Don't recommend that you uh, test that out. But the point is, context of the person you're dealing with is also really important. And yeah. that's why this is inexcusable. They, they probably knew this was not going to be okay. And that's why that learned action, code switching to the room like that, was not okay. Even if it is ignorant, they should have known better. Yeah, you you definitely I think learn those cues from from like you know uh, there's like a really good example a really like lighthearted example of it in Bob's Burgers. It's one of my favorite shows, and it's literally Linda walking into a party and she's like, "Sorry, we're late. Bob had diarrhea." And I'm like, <laughs> I know people like that. Like I know people that would say that and be like, "What?" You know, and his his face when it happens is just like, why would you do that? Yeah. Why would you do that? Um, so I think that there's like, <laughs> there are people that, the, the, a lot of the people that would say like, oh yeah, no, I'm sorry, I told, you know, the, the, if they were to say something like, oh yeah, you know, bronze took 45 minutes to get ready. They wouldn't take it personally if somebody said that about them. Yeah. But... Because, you know, clearly the person that's like, sorry, we're late. Bob had diarrhea probably is just a very open person. But for those of us that are like private, that's mortifying. Like, I don't know what I would do if my partner yeah. walked into a room and said that. I would probably be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Walk right out again. <laughs> so, Umga, or however you say your name, says, so it's okay to mm -hmm. joke at someone's expense as long as they don't stand up for themselves. I think that's a incredibly obtuse way to read what we just said the point is yeah it's playing that's... off the word context it's not that they're not okay to stand up for themselves it's that and i feel like i'm are you a there is a chance that you are a sentient golden retriever and you're just learning to type or perhaps you're like a newly <laughs> programmed cyborg robot ai in which case you haven't had human reaction i understand all these things could be possible but generally speaking when we talk about topics, we're probably not trying to brainwash and convince people that you can oppress the un the uh, the defenseless and, and squander them, destroy them. It's it's probably some other thing that we're trying to communicate. In this case, what we're trying to communicate is if you have a cool relation, cool to them, and you do rib on each other, and that is, and you're with familiar friends, and that is how you talk, then that is the context. That is the situational awareness that somebody else was mentioning earlier, and that's mm -hmm. more okay. The point I was trying to make and, and Jasmine was making is that in this case, in this example, she was not okay with that. And she was with somebody mm -hmm. that should probably know that as, as a person that's supposed to be uh, in, caring for them and, and in tune with them. And this is an example where they just did something, not necessarily to hurt Jasmine, but because they didn't think it would have any impact. And it turns out it did. Because there are couples that 
are to me like brutal to each other, but that's how they talk. So mm-hmm. there, there are couples that they're like, yeah, sorry, we're late. Sarah took forever to get ready. She'd probably be like, well, yeah, I have to balance out his fucking ugliness with my attractiveness. Sorry. It took 45 minutes. And they both laugh. Like yep. there are people, that, but every, every person is believe it or not different. I what? can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> But that's what's so important about this whole thing, too. And, and it's like thinking on that level with this. So getting away even from the example of walking to the party and saying something like that. But the other uses of code switching in general is like we talked about hitting on girls. Uh, again, that can be well-intentioned, but without the proper context or without thinking through what you're saying, your good intentions can get you into trouble and put you in a category um, where you're saying something bad or, or mean. And, and we were actually talking about this, I think, before we even went live with the show, but... This happens in our chat all the time. Um, there's people who probably don't mean anything poor. They're probably not trying to be annoying, and they're probably not trying to be a dick. But because it's the internet and I can't read voice inflection, I don't see your face, all I see is words. And if you're going to be like that person that doesn't look up information on what's going on, like there's an FAQ or there's other people in the chat, and you're just like, why are you playing this game? It looks boring. It's going to come off the wrong way. Uh, and, and that then... Bronze will go, will jump down your throat and eat your soul. Uh, and that's just something that can happen. So, I don't know. You just called someone a golden retriever. You're pretty toxic. I am, yeah. Well, I accept that. That's the that's the problem I have. People be like, you're toxic. Like, Damn I right I was in your chat for five minutes and I contracted a venereal disease. Yeah. So you do the math on that. You're pretty toxic. <laughs> Fair enough. It's a very convoluted subject, I, and I hope we're not losing too many people on this because what we tried to establish from the beginning is that you do code switch. Everyone does. You absolutely do. Um, you more often than not, well, that's not fair to say, you probably also engage in code switching that you're not thinking through that could be communicating the wrong things to people you don't want to communicate to. So if you can come away from this with just more of a like, I should think about that. When, when I'm speaking to this person in that way, in this situation, just think it through and that'll yeah. help you a little bit better. And then the rest of the show has just been context of like, here's an example we came across as far as I can mm-hmm. tell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that the other thing that we, I think with all our examples, we've really driven home, which is awesome is that code switching isn't just a racial thing, right? It can be a racial thing. Um, there might be people that I code switch around and maybe I speak more, I, I, I might use more Punjabi words when I'm around them or this, that, and the other, because I mean, like I've been called a coconut before, um, coconuts, a word oh that uh, Indians use for each other, say brown on the outside, white on the inside. Um, I've been called those things before, you know, like I could tell you right now from driving around one of my not Indian friends, not even white, just not Indian friends. I might have you know, the strokes or radio head playing on, on, in the car. But if it's an Indian friend, it's going to be Bhangra. Otherwise I'm <laughs> probably going to get clowned for that. You know, like seriously, it's a, it's a real thing. Um, and I know that there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to come in and be like, that's wrong. People shouldn't do that. It's, it's just the way they are. Like anytime, you know, Indians are afraid of, of people losing their identity or, you know, becoming, I don't know, more Americanized than they want. And their way of dealing with that is to shame people that they think are too American. And so they say things like that. Yeah. There's an entire movie based off of it called ABCD, which is a big term when I was in high school. It wasn't a cool term, but it's American born confused this which is huh. like you're just a confused Indian. And they made a whole movie. It was Cal Penn's like first movie before he got big from Harold and Kumar. And the entire premise of the film is like a bunch of like, it's like a guy who's into a very Indian girl, but he's very American. And the entire film is about code switching, him trying to switch into a gear that is more Indian because clearly that's something that she can relate to. And he can't relate to her with how American he is. So... It is. I'm not going to say it's not a racial thing because it's something that comes up a lot with uh, POC, with people of color, actually anybody that is from a foreign country. And then, you know, if you I'm sure it happens like because we have a huge Russian community here. I'm sure they have the same issues we do. So it's not just a it's not just, a you know, like a a brown people thing. But it it so often comes up as this super negative thing because people are like, well, you shouldn't have to talk white when you're around white people. And I'm like, well, but that right there is a weird assumption because I'm not talking white. This is how I talk. 
you know, yep. like this is just how I talk. It's I've never viewed it as a bad thing. And the fact that people do sometimes is baffling to me. Um, and I have a very good friend who's been told that, you know, like I've, I've, I've seen him code switch like with around other black people. And, you know, when people say like, oh, it's so funny to see you like on stream or blah, 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 because you talk white. And he's like, I don't talk white. This is how I talk. You know, um, I don't know what talking black sounds like because everything I say is black because I'm black, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it was a really interesting conversation to kind of be a fly on the wall for because I've often, you know, to obviously to a lesser extent felt the same way. But so many people view it as like this terrible thing. Like, well, you should be able to talk like that all the time. You shouldn't be judged for talking. And I think that right there is already just kind of a, a dangerous assumption because you're assuming that everybody talks one way or that, you know, mm -hmm. clearly I'd always speak half Punjabi, half English because no, that's not, it's normally not how I speak. It's just something that I turn on when I'm around family and friends that are Indian. Well, I love that you took um, it here because this is, this is to me the more convoluted but interesting part about this. And that is that... Pulling back the, like, I'm just going to speak very plainly, pulling back the veneer, there's, whenever you speak very plainly, some people get really rustled by this, but whatever, it's been my entire life. But like, when a, and I have friends like this as well, and, and I myself do it, we don't even need, I don't even need to use examples, but like, when you, whenever you hear someone getting pressured, like, you don't talk with an Indian accent, or you, you don't talk as if an, you're an African American, it is actually a natural thing that occurs, because... If you alienate yourself from the majority of people you're talking with or interacting with in any way, shape, or form, you are lessening your chances of success, generally speaking. And there's a lot of people that don't like that, but but pfft, sorry, it, it's absolutely true. And I'm not saying that's good, and I'm not saying that's how it should be, but if you speak with super slang, super ebonics, like very cultural, uh, and you're speaking to like a board of old ass white dudes, it'll do very bad. It'll do very poorly. So naturally, uh, and, and other times contrived, you'll, you'll start speaking to your audience more often than not as a way of trying to get results. You want to get, uh, you want to be accepted. You want to get, you want to be safe, basically. And then people will actually speak down about you and, and will, will hate on it. But it's such a crazy back and forth. And I guess the point I'm trying to make is that is the bear trap that is code switching is that a you will do it as a defensive mechanism you'll do it at, as out of self-preservation whether you're aware of it or not if you do it too much or you do it to such a high degree sometimes your own will like call you a poser or they'll call you a fake or they'll like really attack you for doing this thing and neither side of this is right pure or true like if you have an accent and you want to get some results in a different business field or whatever it is you're doing, sometimes you have to hide it a little bit. Is that evil and bad? Maybe, but it's also just a fact of life. And, and, and this is the part that I like that you said earlier too. Just because your intentions are good doesn't mean people aren't going to still be mad or not be okay with it. And this is another example of that. If you're like, fuck it, no, I was raised in the Bronx and, and my accent's thick as shit. I got flown to San Francisco and I'm presenting in front of a board on this project that I've come up with. And if you're, if you just, if you just like riddle them with thick accent that sounds like you don't know what you're talking about to them, then maybe they don't give you the grant. Maybe you don't get the business. And if you want to go cross your arms and be like those fucking ignorant pieces of shit, you could both be right. They are ignorant. That yeah, is stupid. It is both right, but the, I, I totally agree with you. It's it's one of those things that my then I my brain kicks into the like, but ideally that's not how it is. But that's just not how the world works. Yeah. Some of us live in the realm of reality, and we know that like you're like so when we look at like when I, I had such a hard time with the movie Legally Blonde, it was talked up to me in a big way, and I was like the entire film once again it's it's another film because there's about 800 million movies about code switching that are not called that. That film is about code switching. Yeah. It's about a girl who qualifies to go to a very prestigious law school, but she doesn't look, act, and talk like the people around her. Because of that, they don't take her seriously. Now, the entire premise of the film is supposed to be like, but look, she's still good at what she does. She still has great ethics and morals. She could still be a great lawyer. She just doesn't look or sound the part. And part of me wants to be like, yeah, but she better get a really good track record like really soon because I wouldn't hire her. That was my take. That was like the first thing I was thinking because 
as a human being, we have natural biases. Everyone, we've talked yep. about that before. Everybody is biased, right? And we have an idea of what, you know, this, that, or the other looks like. And I remember, um, it, or sounds like I should say, um, I remember my mom, my mom had two herniated discs when she was very young. She had to take early retirement and she consulted with one of the top doctors in the area who was a neurosurgeon. And she was consulting with him to get his advice on whether or not she should get surgery. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very young. I was like seven or eight. And this dude came in with a leather jacket. He had a ponytail. He had a motorcycle. And I was like, are we sure he's a doctor? And my dad leaned down and he whispered to me and he's like, when you're that successful, you can look however the fuck you <laughs> And it stuck with me because I was like, I just have to be successful and then I can look however I want. And that was something he always told me. He was like, oh yeah, like, you know, because I remember like when I was getting dressed for debate or something, he'd always like help me pick out my suits and tie my ties and stuff like that. And I always be like, you know, I wonder why pencil skirts are always knee length. Like they're hard to walk in because it mm. fucks up your stride. And I was like, if they were a little bit shorter, he's like, they do make them shorter, but I don't think you should do that. People won't take you seriously. I'm like, that's kind of dumb. And he's like, it is, but that's how the world works. And he's like, don't worry, win a couple of, you know, awards and then you can wear as short a skirt you want. So I've been raised to be like, yeah. you play the system. Like you always play the system, you know? And here's, like, here's the thing. That should rub you the wrong way. It should rub everyone the wrong way, but that doesn't mean you don't play the game. And and that's the tough part about this. It doesn't mean you always do 100% too. And I have to say this because it's so funny. It always gets, people are like, so what? If, that, if that's the way the world is, we don't fight it, we don't change. Like, no, absolutely not. And this is where he, like life is so interesting. There is not a yes or no answer to this. There is strategic choices that you make. So sometimes you got to draw the hard line and be like, this bitch is being racist. They're not going to hire me, be not because of my accent, but because I'm a brown person that has a different kind of voice. That's fucked up. I need to confront them on this. Or I can't confront them on this because it'll bring down so much hell on me and my family that it's not worth it for right now. But I'm going to do what I can to fight this. Whatever. The, the, there's the, the, the different hard choices there. But then there is a situation where it's like, for this interview, can I try not to slur my S's? Yeah, I'll try. And that's because it'll be more successful. And there'll be someone who's like, no! Slur your S's. Slur all of your S's. It's like, is it your S that's not going to get the job? Is it you that's not going to get the pay, the money here? And they're like, no, I'm just a supportive friend. You sound like a supportive friend that's not at risk for anything here. Is that correct? And they're like, oh, yeah. But, yeah. So it's tough, right? Like, I love your dad's mm -hmm. advice. It's yeah, And it's very counterculture, by the way. There's a 2019, if he went on the Ellen DeGeneres' show and was like, told my daughter... When she's successful, she can wear a short skirt she fucking wants. They'd be like, bah! <laughs> They'd be like, no, she my needs to cover it. trying to give me practical advice, you yeah. know? And I've been the person in my friend's life that I do that, you know? Like, my, my bestest friend in the whole world, Savina, like, she is this open book. And I, I, I remember we were doing practice interviews because she was going in for an interview. And I was like, you need to learn how to lie. Because she would say things like she's a, she, she was an accountant. And, um... I know that she's good at her job. I know that she's smart. But I remember once uh, she was like doing something and she was like, oh yeah, sorry, it took me an extra long time. I'm dyslexic. I'm like, never say that in an interview. And she was like, why? It doesn't mean I can't do my job. I was like, I agree with you, but they won't hire you. Mm -hmm. Never say that. Say something else. Say you forgot your glasses and you're having a hard time reading whatever they handed you. Never tell anyone in an interview you're dyslexic. Don't do it. Do I realize that that's terrible because dyslexic people can be completely functional individuals? Yes. Yeah. I understand that that bias is bad, but I want her to get the job. So I'm also willing to understand that her hiring manager is probably not going to be, I'm not banking on that dude being as woke as me. Right. I'm never going to bank on that. So I'm always going to tell her. Assume less. Assume everybody will not hire you if you're dyslexic. Just assume that they're not going to do it and lie. And she was like, really? Just tell them. I was like, yeah, if you have to take an extra second reading something they hand you, say you forgot your glasses. <laughs> and like squint and read it three times before you respond. Yeah. But don't tell them that you're dyslexic. And yeah, somebody in chat said they have ADHD. They're an engineer. No company wants to know that. You just lie about it. And I'm sure you're great at your job. And I'm sure if you told them now, they wouldn't care. 
but you have to get your foot in the door. You know, like you just, you want to get the work experience. And, and once she's had several jobs, I'm sure she could tell an employer that, oh yeah, sorry, I'm dyslexic. It's going to take me extra long to read this because at that point she has all these amazing work references and she's, she's respected in her field and it might work, but that like all these things come into like, like showing people what they want. It, it, when I go into an interview as like on camera talent, that is very different than if I go into an interview for any other job. Mm -hmm. When I go into an interview to be like an on-camera talent or to basically audition for a role, I need to be outgoing. I need to be approachable. I need to be energetic. When I'm going into a Code switch. traditional do job interview, I need to be confident. I need to be reliable. I need to look like I have my shit together and that I'm well knowledgeable about the position yeah. and what the job en entails. Two very different codes I have to switch into. And I guess what baffles me, and it's kind of like awesome that you're on, you're, you're kind of like, I feel like we're on the same page on this, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of interested to see like what Chad thinks about this. Recently, there was this case with this um, writer for a game talking about their, some of the issues they were having with the game on their Twitter. On, this was their private Twitter, but they did have posted in the info section that they worked for this company and they were speaking about the game that they actively worked on. And another, like a, a content creator commented and was like, kind of, I guess they, she felt like they were telling her how to do her job. And, uh, cause they, she was like, this is why writing for this game is difficult. And he's like, actually, I think that the reason writing for this game is difficult is X, Y, and Z. And she was like, the next rando ass hat. Oh, this is that big one. Come in. Yeah. And to, in my head, I was like, why are people shocked she got fired? Like, I can't imagine right. calling someone a rando asshat. Like, on my on my own? Sure. Like, if somebody on the street? Yeah. At my job? I can't imagine any Such a good example. job where I could say rando asshat to someone and not get fired. I had this huge disconnect there because it seemed like everybody was on her side. And all I could think was, like, would I call somebody in my chat a rando ass hat? Sure. Would I call somebody at my day job a rando ass hat? No. Use code switch. Yep. I might imply that, but say, hey, I really appreciate you telling me how to do the job I've done for eight years, but that's what I would say. Am well, this I crazy? Is, this is a, no, no. This is a good example because it's both sides of exactly what we're talking about. She reacted as violently as she did. Not because, and, and this is the part, I, this whole debate came up. We were like, well, he was well-intentioned. Actually, look at this guy. Like, he's, he, he just, he's a huge fan of the game. This is what he was saying. Which, and, to me, is like, my brain's just, like, irrelevant. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. But just to give full context of the chat and for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is the part where people get hung up. They're like, he was just a nice guy doing a nice guy thing. But he failed to read the room or to be conscientious of who he was speaking with. He's talking to a video game writer or producer whatever she was in the video game industry as a woman that probably means throughout her entire professional life she's had people question her writing they've been like you write characters way too romantically or there's no way that a woman would be that in power like really ridiculous shit if you mm -hmm. want to roll your eyes you can but they're told this all the time so when she had a guy when she was just kind of venting on twitter like anyone does had a guy who again Super well-intentioned, probably a huge fan, not a bad guy, but he just went through the motions of what he's learned, which is just to be like, actually, I'm going to question that. And whether it was because she was a woman or not for him, it doesn't matter. The situation was she had some guy telling her how to do her job that she's an expert at, that she's the god of. Like, when, when you write your story, you're the god of that world. And someone's mm -hmm. like, actually, this is how you probably should have done that. It's, the, it's, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. But because she 100%. responded the way she did and didn't uh, kind of dial back the medium she was choosing to have her outburst, she got fired. So then that debate happened. And that's why it's so important for people to hear the full context of that, because there's no evil person in the story. She can call him a random ass as far as I'm concerned. She probably could have said worse, and I wouldn't have batted an eye. She did it through the wrong fucking medium, so that got her fired. I understand that. The dude probably didn't mean anything bad at all he's not a bad guy he's not doing because she's a woman necessarily mm -hmm. but because of who he was speaking to and the way he spoke about it it came off really poorly and he should have been more compassionate about that or whatever just never done it that would be the the grand 
plan is that eventually you get to a place where you're like, actually, if I say this to this person in this way, they might get really pissed off, and I don't want that, so I won't do it. And that is the code switching lesson that was learned there, it was, or should have been learned there. It was, that, that's mm -hmm. a great example. That was insane. Yeah, yeah. And it was a very decisive thing that happened. And to, and it was weird because I was so middle of the road with it where I was like, oh, I totally understand her frustration. But the other part of me was like, that's got to be some privilege, man, because there's no way I think I could have gotten away with that. Like my entire life has been people calling me feisty, people calling me sassy, people calling me all sorts of things. And when you see white girls do the same shit, they get away with it like it's cute or it's like like you know th that's like I feel like I get the brunt of it a lot of sure. the time because um I think that pe like the whole like I've been called spicy and I have no fucking idea like what that could mean outside of like a fucking race thing um well white so, women get called cold when they when they're sa sassy right, or flashback they're, right. they're ice queens yeah. they're bitches they're they're cold yeah which sometimes is like almost a positive Whereas I've been called confrontational like a lot in my life. And I'm like, I just feel like if I was either a dude or like just born differently, I wouldn't get called confrontational. Um, to a certain extent, I get uh, annoyed or, or envious when I see streamers who that's their whole brand is like being sarcastic, being crass, making bad jokes, you know, um, and like I'm I say something even slightly just slight a little bit a hit a sarcasm and people immediately bitch with the hot yeah. pocket emote like triggered bitch salty and you're just like all because i said well there's these things called rhetorical questions that's all i said it's insane but the thing it's, uh, is, yeah, is that it's be, being that that is my personality i'm a fucking god tier code switcher because the truth is is that when I'm around a group of people whose approval I'm seeking, I always fucking play it safe. I'll never make that remark where I'm like, you know, if I'm like, oh God, what time is it? While I'm pulling out my phone and someone's like, it's four o'clock or something like that. I'd probably never be like, I, that's a bad example. But if I were to ask a rhetorical question and somebody were to answer it, I would probably never say like, it's almost like there's these things called rhetorical questions. I'd probably be like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, this is, uh, it, it's slightly related, but it's, it's ingrained in the way we communicate in the English language. I can't remember the numbers. It's taught at Oregon State or, and I'm sure a lot of universities, but there's something like, there's like 86 commonly used slanders that are female oriented. And then there's like six male ones or something like that, which is mm -hmm. just to say that we're just predisposed to kind of be able to communicate like, ah, negative female thing. And then. And then that, that gets associated with it. And it's amazing. It's not even that, it's sadly not surprising at all that you bring up race with, with it related as well. Because that's, that's always the place it goes to. Um, for you, if someone really doesn't know me, I'm sure they say something like, she's, she's very passionate. Is she Spanish? Does she have a lot of, has she got a lot <laughs> of do. that rage in there I too? I do get that a like, lot, yeah. Yeah, uh, people that tell, like, well, you get this one too. People telling you you always look angry. All the you time. Know, you're not, not angry. Yeah. Yeah. They're right about me, though, but that's none of their business. Though, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's very weird. Um, this, oh, that's like a whole other conversation, though. Yeah. Gender is such a fucking quagmire of bullshit. Like, I'm definitely I'm not I'm not one of those women that's like, my life would be easier if I was a boy, even though I'm Indian. So it really would have been easier if I was a boy because I was not allowed to do anything. And my brother was Ron, straight up. Everything. It is. I, there's no question. Women have it harder. If anyone tells you, yeah, I'm not even it's not even like a white knight thing to say. It's just it's just fucking there's no question. I think we have it harder because of periods and childbirth and shit like that. But like I I also have like the polar opposite experience, which is that I had a stay at home dad. And I watched him get essentially dragged to filth over it by our extended family for my entire childhood. And the truth is, is that would not have happened if he was a woman. I know plenty of girls who got their bachelors immediately settle down and don't have a job. And no one calls them a layabout, but I have plenty of dude friends that are in between jobs and their girlfriends are picking up the bills. You should see the things that get said about them. It's pretty fucking harsh. 
So I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it's easy to be a dude. I think no, no, no. men have different struggles then life is hard. We do. Yeah, well, life, life is, is hard. shit. Anytime, uh, every time this comes up where I'm like, no, no women got way harder. This guy's like, guys have it hard too. I'm like, that's not what I said. Life is fucking hard. And, and nobody, we should never even engage in this, but we don't need to do an arms race of who has it harder. But generally speaking, as a society, at least here in Western culture, and I say that to be scientific because the further east you go, I think it only gets worse for women before it gets better. I don't think we need to. We got some cultural we got some, that, uh, we gotta, that we have to deal uh, with. Yeah. It's tough out there, but the point is, it's harder for women. It absolutely is. And let's if you don't agree with that, fine. Let's dial it back. Let's just say we're bronze and I are in, in the gaming realm as professional gaming, streaming, entertaining, entertainment people. It's just harder. And that doesn't mean everything's harder. Some things are easier. But generally speaking, women and uh, other minorities are held back or they're checked or they need to be more legitimate or they need to stand out more in order to be given some more. There's a lot of privilege. And I'm totally comfortable saying that. That's fine. That's the other thing too. Some people are like, yeah, Jeff, I've you've had, had challenges. I'm like not saying that. Because I've seen people literally leverage, like they probably wouldn't have a career if they were white. Like they've done nothing but leverage their minority status to get stuff. Like, yes, that's a whole different thing though. Like, but that's um, looking at one example. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also no, just saying I, I they, totally agree. their current yeah. career they got because they're leveraging race. That's yes. fine. Yes. That's non unique for me because everyone leverages something, right? Like for me, it's my incredible charisma, my charming looks, just at, everything across the board in 11. Mm -hmm. I have to leverage all of that. It's, and my challenge is just like, which one do I leverage now? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a joke. Um, <laughs> This one's an impossible topic. We'll have to do a different episode. Like before we get yeah, too far no, down this, this rabbit is the hole. Whole thing. Yeah. And I, I think like I it's it's something that I just don't really like it's one of those things that it, it's it wouldn't be uh an educational podcast so much as it would be just a conversation, you know? Cause I will sit here and go in circles. Like I was driving back yeah. from Portland, three hour drive. I really needed to pee. And I was seriously debating holding it for 90 minutes because I was like, Why? it's 1030 at night. Oh, I'm like, I'm going to have to find like a busy rest stop. I took two different exits and was like, there's no one here. I'm yeah. not getting out of the car like that level of paranoia. And before you're like, that's weird, bitch. No, it's not. I'm not trying to die. <laughs> like, you know, and I'm the type of person that like when I did finally, I was like, I can't hold it anymore. I like specifically called someone and was like hey yeah no i'm 40 minutes out i'm at you know sahelish and uh stopping by the chevron like just nonchalantly so that the person working there knew that somebody knew which chevron i was at and where i was at because that's the level of paranoia yeah. you are hopefully raised with and then i think of like my brother's life where he would like I remember he did something like that. I was like, oh my God, you can't just do that. What if you got mugged? And he was like, I didn't lose my wallet. You know, like he he was so nonchalant about it. I was like, what if somebody, what if you, what if you that's like a really bad neighborhood? I can't believe you were there at 11 30. What is wrong with you? Yeah. And he's like, what? What's the worst that gonna happen? You could have got mugged. Okay, then I give him my wallet and they don't shoot me. What's your big deal? And I was just like, oh my lord, this boy, but it's small things like that are the reason why this it would never be like a educational podcast it would more of just be like a symposium of us talking about which i'm open to because, i'd love to have a discussion around table because it's whatever. so nuanced and weird <laughs> but but the thing is and this is why i like our platform too like uh a lot of times having a form of privilege is again it's talked about in negative connotations it's just something that happens so there's no way to really i don't know frame it that way it's how you use it that is of course important but like the example you just use of like your brother being like, well, I lose my wallet. Whereas for a woman, they're like abducted, raped and probably murdered or, or mm -hmm. at least that's the potential. Maybe they're just mugged too, but maybe not. Maybe they're actually raped and destroyed. And it's like, right. that actually happens. Um, I didn't even notice that shit either myself. Like it took my spouse or a significant other pointing out like, wait, you just walked there. And I was like, yeah, why? And they're like, well, it's like 10 PM. And uh, oh, I didn't. Yeah. I don't know. There's a 10 minute walk. So I just did it. But for them, that 10 minute walk is like, potential death it's just terrible for me it's yeah. not even i don't even consider it but when she told me that i started to think in a different way so then it so then it had me thinking more of like because then conversations start to become a little bit clearer when she's like hey i get in at such and such time and you're like okay cool you're just gonna take an uber right 
for them, they're like, well, I don't want to inconvenience this person, but but I'm scared. It's 11.30 p.m. in Oakland, and this is a place where people get shot and killed every single night of every day. I'd mm -hmm. really rather you pick me up or you're there to get me. I'll feel safer. But they don't say any of that. Instead, they just kind of sit there and they're like, I probably won't. Meanwhile, every day there's a new article being published about an Uber driver that just takes a woman yeah, away. Yeah, I'm. I've always been scared to take Ubers. Just takes you away. Just drives you to their house. And it's like, well, you're mine now. So yeah. I don't think about those things, and it's not because I'm a dick. I'm actually a pretty good guy. But once I heard that thing, it got me thinking in a different way. Where you know, if a friend's coming over, it's a girl or whatever. When are they coming? Are they alone? Are they, you know, like do the nice things for them? And that's why I think what you just brought up as a conversation would be good. Because I think there's a lot of great people that. And that's just one example, but topics like that, they would do things for people if they knew that that was a concern for them. Whereas if they don't, they won't. It's not because they're dicks, mm -hmm. they're not thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. It nah. was, I've had people that were well-meaning that once again, just because you're well-meaning doesn't entitle you to an instant pass that like a very like surface level example. Um, back when I first started streaming, I still had a day job. I had a real life friend that, um, you know, him and I got into a tiff and uh, I stopped responding to his text messages and he showed up at my work. And for him, that was very casual. And for me, I was like ready to call the cops. Yeah. Like I was, to it was me. two such polar opposite reactions to the same thing, you know? Um, and I'm sure to, like you're going to get both in chat. They're probably like, oh, he was probably just trying to see if everything was cool. And you're also going to get the people that are like, that's fucking creepy. And it's weird because it's like it really just depends on on like your experience and your outlook on those things. You know, some people think that some gestures that they think are cute or flirty come off as like super fucking creepy to the other party. Dude, and some of it comes off of. Yeah, some of it really sprouts from like how paranoid we are. And that paranoia isn't a bad thing. It's usually a good thing because it's how you're going to stay alive in a lot of situations. You We're going to do a whole other episode on how hard it is to hit on women or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because the movies I grew up to, if you do that shit, you know, like you show up outside of a woman's house and hold up a radio box or a, you know, you play music, play play like music outside their window. They're like, what the fuck are you doing here? Like, well, trying to be romantic. Get out of yeah. here, you weirdo. Yeah. So, but that's, it's, I don't know, way off topic, but it's just like tough because it's like you should be direct and you should be spontaneous and romantic. But if you're a little bit too much, well, you're a pervert. <laughs> Checkmate. Not today, <gasps> Satan. So I take the approach if I just never flirt, then I'm like, oh, they're going to have to come to me because I'm not going to be a weirdo. GG. Yeah, I think like I, I, I wouldn't recommend that for everyone. <laughs> There'd be a lot but, less kids out there, I think. Yeah, but it's like it's that same thing. Code switching. Like, I, I hope that, you you know, most people don't hit on any situation where men outnumber women. You need to realize that this person's probably been hit on like 700 times already today. So you should probably shift gears and not do like, you know, any situation. It doesn't even fucking matter because it's not just conventions or board game stores. I'm talking about like, yes, baseball games, like any place, a bar that tends to have a weird ratio, any place where Brackles. the gender ratio is totally flopped. You need to realize that you need to code switch and change how you approach any given woman because she's probably been approached 700 times already. And instead of being like, oh, well, how was I supposed to know that? Because people go straight into defensive mode. Don't be defensive. Just learn. Be better. Dude. <laughs> I had uh, I had someone because, you know, I, I was like, I downloaded Tinder for the first time ever or whatever, a couple months ago. And I had my <laughs> friends explain Tinder to me. And they're like, now, listen, every girl on Tinder is... <laughs> They're getting hit on by thousands of guys, and they're gross, and they're incessant. So in order for you to rise up above that, you have to be more incessant, and you have to really stand out. And, I was, and it, was the, it was the biggest turnoff I've ever had in my entire life, where I was like, it felt like one of those mega farms, you know, where there's like literally thousands of cows, 
and they like open the fucking gate and 600 cows run for like get your slop you pieces of shit <laughs> and they're like bumping into each other and, like, and they're like stomping through their own filth and coming out that was how tinder like uh, was explained to me i was like <laughs> and, it, it, and i'm glad they explained it to me because my first week of tinder i was like oh she likes gaming and she she stays relatively fit I'll sweep sweep right on this one. Maybe she'll call me, and then you know, you know, I go, I go through it. I like sweep right on like six girls in a week or something like that. Nothing, and I was like, "Why is this guy?" And they're like, "Oh, it's because you're just one of seven hundred or whatever, you dumbass." And I was like, "Oh, okay. So what do you do?" And they're like, "We'll take a picture of you in a Ferrari shirtless for first, and then <laughs> talk about how you uh, just got back from borders with doctors and shit, and you." I've been nursing an English bulldog with four legs missing to back to health, and then and then you'll be good to go. And I was like, "Wow, this is so stupid! I'll never do any of this." <laughs> so I swiped left on Tinder. <laughs> Your description, though. <laughs> the cows, right? That's my curse, dude. My mom's an artist, so she she sees every like thought she has has like a visualization to it. So that's me. Every time someone's like, this is stupid, let me tell you why, and, and I start picturing stupid, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Fat fucking cows stomping out of their own shit, like, Aah! And the woman's in overalls with boots up to her, her hips, because she's just like, yeah, I'll take the one with the chopped off ear, it looks like it's probably not a rapist. <laughs> I hope I ruined tw uh, Tinder for a lot of people because it ruined oh, it for me. Oh, man. <clears throat> and see, Jeff would probably never relay the story in the exact same way he did here to his grandmother. No. And that's called code switching. That's right. The <laughs> end. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, I don't know, this only loosely relates to this, but it is funny you said that because... Uh, we used to like, you know, go home for Thanksgiving or whatever, and Anna's family's is very prim proper, very downtown Portland, Oregonian family, and we'd be sitting around and they'd be like, Well, it was after seven PM, so we don't go down to Hawthorne and Sixth or whatever it is. And I would, and I would lean in and be like, Is that because the Mexicans were out at that time? And she'd be like, Jeff. And she'd like cover her face, like, Oh my god, I can't believe you said that. Mm-hmm. So I did joke like that sometimes. It wasn't because of the Mexicans, guys. It was just a very inappropriate joke I would make with her because it was so inappropriate. And that's why, is that code switching? It's code defy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which sometimes can be a good thing depending on like what you're trying to accomplish because let's say 20 people come and interview for the same job and they all look the same. They all sound the same and they all have the same, you know, demeanor. And then you come in and you're very casual about it. Maybe they would, maybe that would just help them remember you, hmm. you know, like it kind of depends on the context. Like it's not, I mean, it's like kind of a hail Mary, but yeah. don't use my example, but I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be more likely to be remembered. Because you. Skybax. Oh, no, my brain can't handle all these variables. <laughs> yeah. Right. Basically. This bronze is struggling through this. Like, be racist with people if you think it will help you. I mean, well, no, no, I wouldn't <laughs> say I wouldn't say that. No, no one's saying but, that. Yeah, I, it's weird. It's really weird. Like. Being around so many military people, I can easily say they're so different around each other than they are around civilians. Oh, yeah. Like around civilians, like Brownie's like, yes, sir, no, ma'am. And around like the sailors. other army people, she's like, get out of bed, you fat sack of shit. And I'm like, That's, these are the people you work with. And she's like, yeah. I love them. And I'm just like. Different. Dream. But like everything else, I, and I think this is where we end. I think we're coming to an end of this conversation. I can feel it. Um, there are variables, and that's why that comment was so funny. But, uh, and I hear you. I, I, my hope is that we have a few conversations on the show where 
you don't come out of it feeling like you have all the answers. You shouldn't. You should come out of it feeling like you want to pursue answers. Like everything Bronze and I said More was confusing and weird. It's also our experience. Bronze and I aren't like seventy five year old scholars. We're thirty somethings that just have some life experience or whatever. We think we know what we're talking about, but we we're armchair uh smart people or whatever. So hopefully these conversations start the journey for you guys. Or maybe you're already on your journey, but whatever, you know, it it's uh you're a part of this conversation. We appreciate that. Which is where I'll segue to the end of the show, where I say, for those of you on YouTube or even on Twitter, uh, Twitch, make sure and hit us up in the comments. Um, Bronze just had a really engaging conversation with somebody about in our last episode. What was that one about? That was a. Uh... I'm trolling you. You eventually were like, I'm muting this conversation, and I'm not going to check back. It was great. Oh yeah. Well, they were reaching. If you here's the thing, YouTube comments. If you don't like me, it's okay. You, you don't have to like me. But when you're going to try to make a reach that I'm like somehow sexist and that's yeah. why you don't like me, that's where you just need to step back and become more self-aware. Yep. Like I've come to terms with the fact that the whole internet isn't going to like me. And for your own, just so you can feel better about yourself, you don't have to find a reason to not like me. You can just not like me. But trying to campaign like some faux woke SJ dub about how I've internalized my oppression and I'm... That was biased amazing. against women to those people like kindly say please just touch one vagina in your life and grow as a human being there's that comment Thank you're, you. you're gonna get more you're like a Good. youtube you're a youtube hydra commenter you're like touch a vagina like well i'm writing a book about how, how dare, i've been trying how, now how and, dare you yeah. assume that i'm a virgin i am actually asexual by choice <laughs> i identify as a taint toucher not vaginas i don't like the vagina anyways good i feed off of their tears <laughs> <laughs> what i i've actually been really impressed uh given our topics and how honest we've been about it there actually hasn't been a lot of that which i really appreciate about this show and the platform is that we do get to explain ourselves pretty at length so the amount of people that hear like two seconds of something and then jump to, well, Bronze is a racist, sexist pig. Uh, it's like that guy and that's it, which is amazing considering this is episode 12 and we've gone on like an hour and a half to two hour rants about really deep shit. My experience, which has been in retrospect silly, I still like the conversation, but like before some of the role play shows and whatnot, we'd get into some pretty big topics, but we'd only talk about it for like two minutes and people would be like, wow. Jeff just said this thing that I really disagree with, so he must be a racist asshole. So I'm going to kind of on the YouTube comment be like, Jeff's a dick? Does anybody else agree? Uh, and that sucked. That sucked to read. But now on this show, yeah. if you if you at the end I of this can, can come away and be that. like, Bronze is evil, it's like, well, then you kind of misheard a lot, I think. Yeah. You don't have to agree, but I don't think any of us are shitheads. Anyways, I've been really happy with that. The chat's been great. The YouTube's been great. So thank you guys. And the feedback's been phenomenal on the show as well, so we're really happy. We're going to keep going. Uh, Eric wasn't able to join us for the last couple weeks, but just to kind of touch base with that too, we're going to have him back on because he's just such an amazing guy to have for conversations. But we're going to have other people on too. Eric was a guest that was on for a few episodes in a row, but we have a lot of friends that we consider pretty smart or at least good-looking enough to have on the show to then sell their appearance. And uh, we'll be rotating guests and having them on um, to talk about different topics. And I love your idea too about the symposium of sorts. That's a tough one. I'm going to have to like emotionally prepare for a month before we get into just talking gender or something like that. Cause that'll be like, I'm okay with it, but the, the way people will hear it. It's rough. Tough one. It's rough. I've had to realize that with a lot of the things we say, sometimes we do get a knee jerk reaction and I have to remember to step back because a lot of times the things that you and I talk about hit home and if therapy and, and couples counseling have taught me anything, it's that the gut reaction to that is an emotional like whip back. So yeah. if we say something like, yeah, well, people are socially awkward and they think negging's cute. And someone else is like, well, maybe they're just a... immediately. I'm like, this person has probably engaged in that behavior before. And now they're being told that it's cringy and awkward and that they're a terrible human being. And so I try to step back from that, yes. but for the most part, you know, I think people here are very respectful and I've enjoyed that we in some ways have created a space for people to have these conversations and it's nice. It is really nice. And just thank you guys for all being a part of it. I see a lot of the same names in here and it's just been a fun, uh, a fun thing that we're really enjoying just to give you that update and say, we'll, we'll just keep going. I've had nothing negative on our side that I'm aware of. So uh, this has been episode 12. 
we will be... Oh, actually... Maybe we can do next week, maybe we can. This is a good thing I, I'm telling Bronze this now. I'm, I'm going to be at my sister's house, but it's a... I think Cobra can do it from here, so as long as I can get on a webcam, I'll talk to him, but we'll probably... We might have to miss next week. Anyways, we'll figure it out. But the point is, we'll we be... We could have had your sister on as a guest. Oh, yeah. That would be horrifying. From she's... your Twitter, she seems really cool. She's a great gal. She's one of my best friends. I love her to death, but... Yeah, maybe. That'd be funny for it you guys. It would be horrifying. <laughs> You know what? Maybe we would. Just in in the weird, like, Jeff's the kind of guy that would, you know, I'd have like a flap of skin just hanging off my back to be like, what happens? What happens now? I don't know. Um, We'll see. So anyways, it's either next week or the week after. Or we'll figure it out. But thank you all so much, Bronze. What do you got coming up? You've been some streaming some uh, Total War. Three you enjoying Kingdoms. it? Yeah. I'm enjoying the ever-living heck out of it. People love I did it. really like Total War Warhammer and Warhammer 2. But this one, like, is a whole other animal because there's so much politics in it. Yeah. And I, I love that. And, like, there was some of that in Warhammer, but I mostly play, like, Goblins, Greenskins, Ickit Claws, stuff like that. So I there's less of it. And now it's like, I can actually marry my opponent's daughters and have like war marriages and stuff like that to create peace and stuff like that. So that part's really cool. Other than that, I'm working on a couple of new projects. Um, I'm trying to restart the book club. I have a weekly comic book talk show and I'm starting my first RPG soon, Dang. which is still very much in its like beginning phases. I've never done an RPG on my channel. That's awesome. But I'm really excited to do that. Like in my own space. So, and some of the stuff I'm up to come through. What's that dude behind me, Chad? What are you talking about? <laughs> Shit, he moved? Anyways, that's awesome, Bronze. Uh, tomorrow we'll be on Jesse Cox's channel as well for the D&D show. We'll be resuming that. And Eric's actually going to be joining as a more full-time member um, on that show. So that's really fun. That's 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Well, it's supposed to be 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Jesse Cox's channel. Literally J-E-S-S-E-C-O-X. And if you enjoy that, you should check it out on YouTube if you haven't already. It's a good show. We're having a good time. Yeah, it's um, fun. I just rolled up characters. I'm going to be starting up a new D&D show with Destiny and some of his friends. So that'll be really fun, as well as Koibu, who you guys, some of you know that name. So there'll be that going on. And then just the regular stuff is coming up. We'll be doing the pylon show and all that. So thank you, guys. We love you. Thank you for doing the show. It'll be up on YouTube. And we'll keep going. All right. You guys take it easy. I'll see you later.